Hey there, so this is going to be a really quick one-shot video. There's a ghosting effect that I really like that I wanted to go over how to do that. Um, this is sometimes seen in Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Super Metroid, the upcoming Dead Cells, and even the Street Fighter games have it. Where as your character moves, you'll see this kind of ghosting trail of an after image of what they did look like. And I hadn't really seen any good ways to do it, so figured out how to do it myself, and thought I might as well share that information with you guys. So, let's get started. Okay, so I have this really, really simple scene set up here. All I really have is some uh, tiles that are taken from the Inca tile set by Cronbits on itch.io. You can download that for free. And the character sprite is the adventurer sprite, also from itch.io, uh, created by RVROS. This is a Pretty quality little sprite here. So uh, all I have right now is just the ability to move left and right. All right, so all I have in my scene here is just uh, this little sprite and the ability to move left and right. I have no other coding built in. I haven't even put colliders on this. This is just a sprite that automatically translates, or not translates, but uh, has velocity on the x-axis. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a after image that's going to go behind it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an empty game object and I'm going to rename this to ghost. And this ghost, uh, I'm going to add a component to it of a sprite renderer and another component of an animator because I want to have a little bit of animation to it. All right, now my ghost here, I want to be able to see this in my scene. So I'm going to put this at 0, 0, 0. And for my sprite, for now, I'm just going to go into my adventurer, my little individual sprites, and I'm just going to pick one of the idle sprites. Um, I'm going to change in code which sprite it's actually going to have. But there we go, just so I can kind of see it in the scene. It doesn't matter where this is right now because this is going to be just the prefab for the ghost. So one thing I'm going to do, um, I kind of like how in Street Fighter and in Symphony of the Night, how it has a little bit of color to it. So I'm going to uh, make it a little more gray, maybe a little blue, and bring the opacity. Well, I'll no, I'll leave the opacity complete for now. All right, cool. Now I'm going to create an animation for this. So I'm going to highlight the ghost and bring up my animation window. If you don't already have that open, if you just go to Window and choose Animation, uh, I'm going to create a new clip. This is asking for what I want to call this, and I'm just going to call this uh, Ghost Fade Out. Now, in this case, um, there's a bunch of different things you can do for this. I'm going to click Record, and I'm going to start editing the uh, Sprite's Alpha value. So I want it to start fully opaque, and then at a minute, I want it to be fully transparent. So, at a minute, do, 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 fully transparent. So it's just kind of fading out like that. Now you can do a bunch more with this. You can make it so that it's solid for most of that second, and then it only fades out at the tail end by just adding another key at, in my case, 0.5, um, whatever, <laughs> uh, five sixths of a second, and then, um, that means that the fade out is going to happen right towards the very end. You can also play with the colors quite a bit. So here, you can have the color be exactly what it should be, and then slowly fade to something that's kind of greenish or bluish. So like, I don't know, maybe here, I'll have the color still be plain white, and then that way, it's kind of fading in color and fading in alpha value, but it's staying mostly there. Um, I'm going to make this alpha just slightly dimmer, just so I can... Oh, didn't mean to do that. I'm going to make the alpha value at zero seconds just slightly dimmer. And then here, a little more dim. And then here, a little more dim again. And I'll make it kind of super tealy. And there we go. 
So you can play around with this effect if you like. Uh, find something that you find that suits you. So there's my ghost. Now I'm going to drag my ghost into my prefabs. Um, you'll see where I created this effect before. I already have a shadow in there. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to go into my script that I currently have for controlling my player. As I said before, I really only have the ability to move left and right and change my animation. It's a really, really simple script. It's not necessarily the best way to do this. I just kind of threw it together to try this out. So just to walk you through what I currently have, I have my rigid body 2D, which is my rigid body. I have a float for the speed and a reference to the animator. These are um, the rigid body and the animator are both public, which means I set them in the inspector. And my speed is also public, also set in the inspector. On my update frame, I'm getting input. And if my uh, bright arrow is down, then I'm creating a new vector 2, which is speed, and then whatever the y velocity is maintains. I set a, a moving bool to be true, and I set my local scale to be facing to the right. If I press the left arrow, uh, negative speed, moving is true, and facing the left direction. And then if I'm not pressing either of those keys, I have no velocity and moving is false. So it goes back to the idle animation. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a reference to that ghost effect. So I'm going to create a public, um, actually, before I do that really quickly, I'm going to need to create another script here. So um, in my uh, scripts folder, I'm going to create a new C sharp script. I'm going to call this ghost. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. So this ghost effect is going to be for um, my player to actually create. And what I want here is I want to have a float that is the delay between each of those ghosts that's created. So I'm going to say um, public float ghost delay. And I'm going to create another float that's private that I'm actually going to manipulate in the code. It's a private float ghost delay seconds. Now in my start method, I want to set ghost delay seconds to be equal to ghost delay. And then in my update method, I'm going to uh, slowly tick down ghost delay seconds. So I'm going to say if ghost delay seconds is greater than zero, that I'm going to decrease it. Ghost delay seconds minus equals time dot delta time, which is the time since the last frame. And then um, I'm, yep. And then I'll add an else statement, meaning if ghost delay seconds is less than or equal to zero, um, I'm going to add a little comment here to generate a ghost. And then I'm going to reset the seconds to be whatever it should be. So ghost delay seconds is equal to ghost delay. Nope. There we go. All right, cool. Now to generate the ghost, I need to have a game object for what that ghost is. So uh, public game object ghost. And then here, when I'm generating the ghost, I'm going to instantiate it. Um, and I'm going to instantiate it as a game object because I want to do some manipulations here. So I'm going to say game object um, current ghost is equal to instantiate. And I have to tell it what to instantiate, which is ghost where to instantiate it at transform.position and with what rotation to instantiate it. So I'm going to use transform uh, dot rotation. All right, cool. So yeah, I'm going to save my script. I'm going to pop back into Unity here. I'm going to find my little adventurer sprite. Uh, I'm going to add my ghost script to it. As soon as everything's done thinking here. So control, rigid body, I'll add ghost. My ghost delay I'm going to put at 0.1 seconds. And for my ghost game object, I'm going to add my ghost. 
going to get rid of my ghosts in the scene here. And now if I hit play, you'll see that this ghost is generating just again and again and again and again. There's no real control to it. So uh, let's add some control to it. Let's go back into our scripts here. And in my control script, I'm only going to generate one of those game objects um, if I'm already moving. So I'm going to need to have a reference to the ghost. I'm going to say public ghost ghost. And then in my ghost script, I'm going to have a check to see if we're moving and need to generate. So I'm going to make this a public bool make ghost and by default I'm going to set that to false. Uh, in the update method, I'm only going to access any of this if make ghost is true. And I'm just going to encapsulate all of this inside. There we go. So if make ghost is true, then we're going to decrement the counter if we need to. If we don't need to decrement the counter, we're going to generate a ghost and then reset the ghost delay. The other thing I want to do, and this is why I instantiated this as current ghost, if I save this really quickly here, um, in my control here, if I press the right arrow, I want to say ghost dot make ghost is true. Uh, if I'm pressing the right arrow, and if I'm pressing the left arrow, ghost dot make ghost is true. And if I'm not pressing either button, ghost dot make ghost is false. So if I save this pop back into Unity really fast. If I hit play, as soon as everything catches up to me, um, you'll notice that, oops, I have a null, oh, I forgot to assign my ghost script. So in my adventurer, control needs to know what ghost is. So there we go. Now I wanna go out and maximize here just to show you some resource management stuff. So right now, there's no ghosts being generated, but as soon as I move, there are some ghost clones that get created. Oh, huh. I have this animation set to loop, which, I don't know, it's kind of a neat effect, but isn't the best effect. So let's change that animation so it's not looping. So I think I put that in here somewhere. There we go. Um, called it ghost fade out. Yep. Now, once you find your animation, if you want it not to loop, you can just turn off loop time. Now, if I hit play, uh, they should fade out. So you get that kind of fading out. However, if I go out and maximize here, you'll notice that all of those ghost clones are still in the scene, which is creating a memory loop. Also, they only have the same, like the original pose that it had. So I want to be able to, one, have it reflect the pose that my character has so that it's showing the correct animation. And two, I want these to be, you know, eventually destroyed. So first, let's deal with the destroy part. Let's go into our ghost script here. Um, after we reset the ghost delay, well, it doesn't really matter if we do it here or not. I want to destroy that current ghost, but I want to destroy it after a delay. So I'm going to call it destroy current ghost. And if you throw in a second uh, argument here, that's going to be how long it takes for the destruction to happen. So it's going to destroy the current ghost after a delay of 1f. All right, cool. Now the other thing that I want to do is I want to know um, what sprite that current ghost should have. So to do that, I want to know what sprite our adventurer currently has. So in here, when I generate my ghost, I'm going to say sprite current sprite is equal to, and I want to get the component of my sprite renderer from the same object that this is attached to. So get component, and the component I want to get is a sprite, oops, if I could spell correctly, that'd be great. Sprite renderer dot sprite. So I want to get the current sprite. 
and then I want to set my current ghost to have that as its sprite. So current ghost dot get component sprite renderer dot sprite is equal to current sprite. So I'm going to set it to be the current sprite of my object. I'm going to save that script, go back into Unity here, let's hit play. And let's go out of maximize just to make sure that we're, we can see. Ha! So it's the right sprite, but it's not the right rotation. So let's fix that. So if we take a look at our script here, uh, in our control script, I have a line here that sets its local scale to be negative one on x when it's moving left and positive one on x when it's moving to the right. Now, what that means is I just have to uh, set the scale of the current ghost to be the same as the scale of the game object this is attached to. So, uh, since I'm already creating current ghost as a game object, all I have to do is add a line in here to say current ghost dot transform dot local scale is equal to, and I just want to set it equal to the same local scale as the object this script is attached to. So I can do this dot transform dot local scale. That way it's going to be exactly the same as whatever object this is attached to. I'm going to save this script pop back into Unity. I'm going to hit play and let's test it out again. Okay, so traveling left just fine, traveling right just fine. And I really like that kind of fade out there. There's one more thing I want to do, and this is kind of nitpicky, is I want to make sure that my ghost is always rendering behind my character. So I'm going to go to my adventurer and the sprite renderer for my adventurer. I'm going to put him uh, layer, or sorry, order one in layer. Um, go to my prefabs, take a look at my ghost. And make sure that my ghost has an order in layer that's lower than that. So now when I hit play, my ghost is always going to render behind my character. Now, you can change this uh, by changing the length of the animation. So for example, if I were to take a look at my ghost object, I'm just going to pull one into the scene so I can edit the animation, grab all of these keys and just make them half as long. So, um, uh, once I, I do that, that's going to change how long the ghost is around for. Since I made a change, I'm going to make sure to click Apply so that it's going to be applied to the prefab, and then I can delete this one from the scene. When I hit Play, now I can see what kind of effect having that shorter lifespan is. And of course, you can make it longer. The other thing that you can do is you can make it so that you have more or fewer ghosts. For example, right now I have my ghost delay set to 0.1, if I set it to point 0.2, then the spacing in between the ghosts is going to be significantly longer. Like that. And if I set it to something smaller, like say point 0.05, the spacing is going to be significantly shorter. And it's going to appear more like one continuous streak. So, yeah. There we go. That's a little um, effect that I just I really like in platform games. I think it's not used, in my opinion, often enough, but maybe it's going to get used too much pretty soon. Um, so, yeah, I hope you like that. Uh, if you want to, you can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post a new video. You can join my Discord, where I'm chatting pretty much every day. Uh, you can ask me any question you want to down in the description below. Have yourself a wonderful day.